Hi, everyone. So we discussed the section 3.4. So section 3.4 to 3.6, they discuss the extension and the, um, some modification of the binary models, binomial models. Okay, so um, in sections 3.2 and 3.3, that we int introduced several the tests, and sometimes our model is rejected. So if the model is not sufficient in the test in sections 3.2 to 3.3, the, there are several possibilities. So we have uh, basically two reasons. So one is the model specification is wrong. And the other is the binomial assumption is wrong. So model specification is wrong. That is a typical case that, that we have to transform X or we have to transform Y or we are missing predictors in the data set or we have irregular data or we have wrong data. If we have one outlier and it affects the output a lot, then it can easily, you know, the H naught is easily rejected sometimes. So, but the, these things uh, should be handled by diagnostic plots and also the data collection. So we, disc we focus on the second one, so binomial assumption. So binomial assumption, so yi follows binomial mypi. So yi, the response variable is the number of success. So it's pretty reasonable assumption, but the, this is sometimes violated. So the main reason is that this yi is basically the sum of mi trials. So I would say yi is equal to z sub i, z sub one to z sub m sub i. Okay. So, and each trial is, is a success or failure, but often, um, so, okay, so to make the yi follow the binomial, the m sub i, p sub i, the z one to z m i, they should be identical and independent, but such assumption is sometimes not true. So first scenario is that the probability of success is different within observations. So Z1 to Zm have different success probabilities. So in such a case that this distributional assumption isn't correct. And also trials are dependent. Even if success probability is 50%, if Z1 and Z2 and Z3 and so on are highly positively correlated, that it's not uncommon that to have all successes or all failures. So in such a case, this assumption is violated. And the, the other reason is that some NIs are too small to get some approximation in the test in sections 3.2 or 3.3. So basically we focus on especially the first two points in this section. So the definition of, of over dispersion and under dispersion. So recall that the, um, when X follows the binomial random variable NP, N is again the number of trials and P is the success probability. Then expectation of X is NP and the variance of X is N times P times one minus P. So the one important point is usually N is fixed. So if we fix N, then both expectation and the variance is dominated by parameter p. So that means if we estimate p by basically the number of success, then variance should be automatically determined. But actually, if we calculate the sample variance, the, sometimes the sample variance is much larger than the theory. So this is called over dispersion. So variance of x is actually the larger than n times p times one minus p. And under dispersion is similarly defined. So variance of x is less than the n times p minus p times one minus p. So this is the situation of under dispersion. So now I would like to mention that the, the variance of x is basically n times p times one minus p. And the, this function that looks like this, and the, this is largest when p is equal to one half. So if P is around one half, the variance is largest because basically 50% is the most uncertain situation. 
So if success probability is 50% and suppose n is 100, then typical realizations are 45 or 50 or 55. But if, sorry, if the p is equal to 0 0.5, but the, if p is equal to 0 0.99, then typical realizations are 99 or 98 or 100 and other things that usually happen. Um, I mean, it's not common to have other values. So you can see that the um, p is equal to 0 0.5 has larger variability than p is equal to 0 0.99. Okay, so why this over dispersion happens? So often we have over dispersion. The, the, under dispersion is not very common, but sometimes happens. So what's the reasons for over dispersion? So first one is the non-identical trials. Um, for example, let's think about the n is equal to 10. And okay, so think about the COVID, the um, you know, infection probability or something. And the, we have three cities, A, B, and C, and the, these cities have different average age or a different occupation of the residents, maybe city A, age is higher and the more essential workers and so on. And then if N is equal to 10 and so suppose the unconditionally, the success probability is 0 0.10. So the probability of infection is 0 0.10, but maybe if we choose the 10 observation from city A. Suppose all 10 observations come from a specific city, then um, the probability in city A, probability is the 0 0.2 um, here and the city B, maybe um, 0 point, maybe 0 0.08 and CTC, P is equal to 0 0.02, then if the 10 observations come from all the t all 10 um, observations come from city A, then higher chance to have Y is equal to the two or three. If we just in the, so if the all 10 observations have exactly the 10% success probability, the usually two or three happens uh, pretty, the, the, to have two or equal to two or three is uncommon. But in this situation, it's not uncommon. If we think about the N is large, for example, N is 1000, but the one specific city, you can see that if all 1000 A, then it's easily, it's easy to have you know, y is equal to 200 or something, or 210 even. Observations are identical with probability 0 0.1, that it's very rare to have y is equal to 200. Probably most of the time, y is equal to 101 or 95 to 10. Okay. So it's kind of clusters. A, B, and C, and the all observations come from specific cluster. The cluster is the um, random, so that the average probability is 0 0.1. So E of Y is larger. So this is one reason for over dispersion. And the second one, for example, think about the N is equal to five and all the just to save some budget, those five observations come from specific household. This kind of survey is the, sometimes common because the, it costs less than randomly selecting five individuals. But it, in this case, the obviously, the sometimes the all are infected COVID and some families, the um, no one gets COVID. So in this case, even it is 0 0.1, it's very likely to have Y is equal to five or four. And of course, the most of the time, Y is equal to zero or one, but in this, the sampling scheme, it's more likely to have Y is equal to four or five. 
So in this case also that we have over dispersion. So basically the individuals, the five individuals within a household are highly correlated. Yeah, so these are the main reasons for over dispersion. So we have to uh, deal with the situation. And the one simple solution is the uh, introducing another parameter. So in statistics, sometimes that we don't have really a neat theory, but just add one parameter to accommodate the more situation. So the strategy is to introduce, to introduce the one more parameter sigma square and assume that the variance of xi is equal to the sigma square times m sub i P sub i. So the, the last three factors are just the um, theoretical variance of xi, but also that we add sigma square here. And remember that the chi-square statistic in section 3.3, .3, so this follows chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom n minus q minus one. Here, the q is the number of parameters in this, the binomial model. So if we uh, divide this by n minus q minus one, then basically under null hypothesis of our model is correct, then this follows that um, basically the, the expectation of this quantity is one. So if this is much different from one, then basically the, uh, we have strong evidence that sigma square is not equal to one. So we make this quantity as the sigma hat. So this is a kind of similar to the definition of sample variance. Yeah, so using this concept in the next uh, video, uh, we discuss the, what happens for the model.